Okay. Try this again. Now I heard someone's phone just go off. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Looks like it's working now. All right, people, how's the uh, connection now? Can you let us know? Let Demi know how the connection is if you get a chance. Are they letting you know? Uh, I'm not getting any comments yet. It's better, much better. Better, much better. Does that mean it's good? Hey, Demi and Clint, better. We're back. Better, back. Yay. Okay, good. Looks like we're All right. good. <laughs> All right, good. All right, so here's the deal. We're going to try and give you uh, tutorials and really just kind of like an inside look into the shop and what we do here at Heart Design Co. as much as we possibly can. Um, is it me showing you the exact way how to do it? Well, no, that's really not woodworking. There's kind of a million different ways to do different things. And so, you know, what I show you here is kind of the way that I do it. And then you take it, you know, to your shop and you translate it into the way you want to do it. Um, so, you know, for me on the lathe is a great example of just figuring out your own style and doing it on your own because I never even really had someone to show me how to use a lathe. It was really just, I went into my garage and I just went to town. I bought some tools. I bought the cheapest lathe I could find because that's all I could afford. And from there, I just kind of created my own style. I could not tell you the name of all of these tools over here that we have hanging. There are scientific or official or whatever you want to call it names for all of these chisels. I don't know what they are though. There's like the round one and the pointy one and the really round one and the big round one and the small pointy. I, I don't really know. I just kind of do my thing. That's the way I do it. So somebody out there could probably give me a tutorial on lathe chisels. Um, but what we're going to turn today is one of our candlesticks. Um, and uh, this is what we start with. Let me grab another blank here. Um, the last tutorial we did, which was a while ago, and I apologize, it's been such a long time in between, but now that's why we've got Demi and she's gonna, you know, keep us on our toes uh, and make sure we get these done um, so you guys get fresh material. But we did a tutorial a while back on making these blanks. It's a three by three blank. It's just two two by fours that we glued together, laminated or glued together. And then we cut down to three by three stock. We mark it on the top and on the bottom. We center it and we uh, uh, hammer a, a guide hole in there. And then that's our candlestick blank, okay? And it's just a simple two by four, no big deal. All right, now, a couple people commented, let me reassure you, we always use safety gear. The picture that we put on Instagram this morning was uh, somewhat of a glamour shot, although it was a horrible picture of me. It was just something we were doing a while back uh, that was not real real work, um, even though the lathe was turning. Um, but we always use safety glasses and all that good stuff. I use a mask, glasses of course. But I use a mask because it can stuff can pop up and hit you in the mouth and and in the nose and face and everything. And I just feel like this is you know it's not just my like respirator mask. It's like my face mask. It protects me. So I just feel more confident. Some people don't use gloves. I use gloves. I have had guys that work, have you know done turning and stuff like that for a long time, and they say don't use gloves. I think it's a personal preference. They say it can get caught in there. I guess it could, and I really hope it doesn't get caught on live periscope television. Um, but I've never had that problem before, knock on wood. I just like to protect my hands. There's a lot of stuff going on here, and I don't, I don't want to get you know all scraped up. So I use gloves. All right, first thing we're gonna do. We're going to get this thing turning, and we're just going to round out the candlestick. That's where we're going to start. Here we go.
we've got some people wanting to give, wanting you to have a giveaway with this candlestick. <laughs> <laughs> that can be done. <laughs> Do that? Do we like enter him into a, dra a drawing or something? Okay, there we go. So, first step down, we basically just rounded out our blank. Now, as you can see, I've left the base for the candlestick right here. So, that's as far as we're going to go. And so, this is pretty much done. Now, this is the part that I love with candlesticks. As you can see, like over here I have, um, this is one of the legs that we do and I have all the measurements and all this different stuff. With the legs that we do, I have to be very specific and I've got to make my marks and everything needs to be the same. With candlesticks, um, it's really fun because you just really get to wing it and just kind of do whatever you want to do. So what's really fun about that is I think candlesticks and things like this are a really great place to start because it does not matter. You can't mess it up. Play with it, make it however you want it to be, and if you don't like it, take it off, put another one on, try it again, and they can all be different. So it's really, really fun like that. With this one, I go from left to right. That's typically the way I do it. Um, it's funny, I can, I can, guys have been watching me in the shop do it, and then they'll jump on here, and they'll go from right to left, and the top will be over here, and the bottom will be over here. You know, everybody has their own way. For me, it's top to bottom, left to right. Um, so I'm just kind of go with I'm gonna go with the design that I have in my head and uh, and turn it and then uh, we'll go from there. Any any questions or anything like that? We're we all good. No, nope, no questions. Everyone's just amazed. Um, there was one comment about how you wore a clean shirt for the Periscope, <laughs> but it's not so clean anymore. <laughs> no, not clean anymore. We don't have clean shirts and, anymore. And a question just came in on what kind of lathe you were using. Okay, so this is. Central Machinery Lathe, it's um, a really simple lathe, it's pretty cheap. Um, I got mine at Harbor Freight. Um, you know, it's the same one I've been using basically. I've, I've gone through a few of these, the same model, um, but it's it's long enough to do a table leg. Um, it can take about a max of around 35 inches, um, but yeah. So. And then also a couple questions uh -huh. wanting to know about speed control and then also if there's a certain type of wood that's better to use on it than others. So we'll answer a lot of those questions on the blog um, uh, when we post this video on there. But speed control, I'll put it this way, when you can go fast, that, that certainly helps, especially um, like uh, with the uh, smaller pieces like this. But if you, we'll put like a big chunk on here, an eight by eight by like 24 inch long piece. And that when I turn it on to the lowest setting, cause it's so big and the momentum gets going, you don't need it. If, if I were to turn it all the way up, this thing would just like go crazy and just fall apart. So the bigger the piece, the smaller I have to go on here speed wise. Uh, on these, I keep the speed up pretty high, around medium and it's pine, you know? Um, but if it's like a hard wood or oak or something like that, um, I find personally that the higher the speed, the better. So we'll answer those on the blog. All right, here we go. Here comes the fun stuff.
What's really cool is just with a small little touch of a small like tool like this, see how it's just kind of curved on the end? I love to do a lot of shaping with this. Watch what a drastic difference this is gonna make here in just a second. Let me get it real close. So you got this little thing right here. And then with just the slightest touch, like that. Just kind of add a, a cool little ridge. I mean, I didn't even really do anything much. I just kind of just barely touched it. I like that. here you can see where there's like little ridges and things I use this tool right here with a straight edge and that smooths out everything so watch this so you can see it if you see all these lines right here okay what we're about to do is we're gonna use this tool right here the flat chisel head and we're gonna straighten we're gonna smooth that up See how all those are gone now? There you go. Now, the more smoothing out you can do, the better because then you hit less sanding to do. All right. Pull this guy out. I always keep my sandpaper close by. I've got my 120 and my 220. Always keep a couple stacks right here. So as I'm going, I'll just take like the, the, the big sheets of sandpaper. I'll cut it down into four by four and uh, little four inch squares or whatever. And I can just take it and sand it. kind of like a chef you know a chef has their little place in a restaurant I think they call it I'm gonna I'm gonna mess up the French here I think it's called the mise en place or something like that mise en, mise en place mm -hmm. I don't know it's mise en place is what it looks like but the point is is that it's like it's their little station and they've got all their little stuff that they use every night whether it be cilantro salt pepper um, you know uh, chili peppers or whatever you know different little things that they use every night onions all that stuff and they kind of have their little station set up and their cutting board and every little thing that they like and then they make all their dishes right there it's kind of the same thing I got all my stuff right here my sandpaper my tools got my square my measuring tape my pencils everything I need so I don't have to be running all over the shop to get stuff I keep it all right here I don't even have to move For these little curvy sections, what I'll do is I'll fold the, the sandpaper like that and just kind of fit it up in there. Whoop. Whoop. That one's big enough for my finger like that, see? Voila. It doesn't take real skill to do this. Just kind of hold the paper like that for these skinny sections. That's my two, my 120. Now I'm gonna do my 220. Thing. 
boom. There we go. Done. Now for this one, my lathe, all the handles are all messed up, so I have to just use it so much to use a sledgehammer. There you go. Voila. See? Fun. There you go. And what's cool is that started from this, which actually started from just a couple of two by fours. So a couple two by fours, some glue, table saw, chop saw, and then just some creativity on the lathe and got yourself a candlestick. We'll drill the top out right over here. We've got a drill bit. It's a two and an eighth inch uh, boring bit and we'll drill that out. We clamp it down in here and then we drill down. You don't want to try and hold this thing in place while you drill out the, the hole. That's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Demi, thanks for the wonderful camera work. You did a great job. Really. <laughs> Worked real hard. And we'll have all these questions an answered for you on the blog. So tune in there. There you go. Perfect. All right, guys. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you later.